G'day viewers, Sepp here. I've just agreed to the barter system. Now the barter system is, if you ask someone to do something for you, he's gonna ask you to do something in return. So I asked a relative, can you do this particular job for me? And he said, yes, I can. Then he said, but I want you to do something for me. And I said, yeah, no worries, what would that be? And what he's done is he's bought a Peewee 50 motorcycle and it doesn't run. And he's asked me to get it running. So more than likely, this is going to be more than one video. It's probably going to be a couple of parts. A bit like the old mower. So I'll give you a look at it. Here it is here. There's a few things missing off it. Already notice it's got a bent rim. The tire sticks up a little bit. So we're gonna need to replace the tire. There's a couple of things happening down here. This don't look real good. We're gonna buy a few bits for it. Got the choke cables missing. Needs a new carburetor, new spark module, probably new spark plug. The actual lead don't look real good, as you can see. It'll take a bit of time, I think, but I'm pretty confident we're going to get it going. You can probably hear this banging noise in the background. We've got a uh, locust plague up here at the moment. It's the locust actually banging on the side of the shed, so hopefully it won't be all right through the video. It shouldn't be, but that's what the noise is. I stripped it down to have a bit of a look and just see what we're in for. So I'll give you a look at it. So I've got a lot of the stuff off it already. Just checking through it. Just see what we need to do. I'll have the carby off. Obviously getting a new one of those. Which probably going to do away with the oil injection system that's a cable that goes over to that which doesn't fit properly the new module at the top here that wasn't in that position I've just been setting it up we're going to put a new one on anyway because that's the end of it looks like that so a new one of them coming I'm just checking all the wiring at the moment which seems to be a bit bodged up with all these cable ties so I look at the old fuel tank tap. It was chockers full of oil, but I've got that working now, so that, that's pretty good. It's a petrol filter that's actually full of oil from the fuel oil mix. So the previous people were obviously mixing their own fuel. The uh, oil injection system wasn't working, so they've mixed their own. They've got this little tiny petrol filter on there and it's just clogged full of oil. It's obviously been sitting for a fair while, um, before it had been started or tried to be started or running. It must have been sitting for a hell of a long time with all this oil sitting everywhere. So yeah, so that's what it looks like at the moment. We stripped it down pretty well. I've just finished taking the tape off around these wires and the CDI unit and the control unit, it appears that they've been bastardized, these wires. They've been cut and rejoined at some stage, maybe twice. They should have connectors on them. Then I went around to the other side of the bike. Up near the handlebars. And I had a look at these wires that were under, they're all taped up. And they've all been cut at some stage. They've been joined here and then they've been joined, cut and joined back up here again. So the wiring job on this is not real good. So what we've done is we've progressed a bit further and we've decided we'll try a coil because we haven't been able to get spark out of it. We've tried to coil a new one and still no spark. We get a little bit of power up to the positive side here but not enough to generate a spark in the, in the spark plug. So I'll show you what we've found. So first of all that was a spark plug that came with the bike. This is the correct one. 
So you can see the difference in the size for a start. Now the other thing with that is, this here is the original coil that came with the bike. If you have a look at this, so this is where the spark plug goes in here. And it had this on the on the top like this around the wrong way. That won't even this this black line represents the socket down the bottom where the end of the spark plug tip should go into. And it only goes in that far. So when you have a look at it from that the outside, that doesn't go anywhere near that anyway. So the way it's supposed to go in is like this without that nib on the end. Now even with that one, it still doesn't get down far enough to clip that in. So obviously we've had to replace the coil. We've put a new one on and we've got the bright cap now so that plugs in properly. Goes all the way in to where it should go. So we thought what we better do is we better progress down to the magneto and take this off. And we're going to replace the wiring. So to do that, we had, did have a bit of trouble. First of all, the cap that come on the top here, all the screws that were in it were stripped. So it was these screws here were all stripped. So we've had to cut with an angle grind and slice these screw heads so we can get them out. This is still okay though, we can still put this one back. Just cut the plastic a little bit on the edge there so it'll still be okay. So I managed to get that off. Then we went to get the flywheel off. And that was a job in itself. Because what we found is when we took the nut off, which is this nut, it had a washer, spring washer behind it like so. But as we tried to wind this off, it was that tight that it actually stripped the thread on the crankshaft at the end. So right at the end there, I'll give you a look. You can see right there, that's supposed to have been threaded all the way to the end. I've had to tidy all the end of this up so we can get another nut back on there. We couldn't use the original nut because that's all stripped. And I got a feeling when that was put on at some stage, it might have been cross threaded. And of course, when we tried to wind it off, it just burred up and, and we had all sorts of trouble to get that off. And we finally got there. So the other thing we had a bit of trouble with was the screws in here. There's two of them that hold. There's one there and there's one up the top there, you know, underneath there and they hold this in position. I had to use the impact driver to get that off. We're lucky a couple of whacks with this and they, I was able to turn them out. So at this stage, I'm just waiting on another wiring loom. We'll replace the whole lot, the CDI, the, the um, control box, all the wires up to the top, to the handlebars, to the switch, including the switch. We're going to do all that as well. And um, we should have a spark. That's the plan. The flywheel looks good. I've cleaned that all up. The magnets are all look okay. Inside that, inside there, that was all full of corrosion, really bad. So I've cleaned it up the best we can. The shaft's really good. There's no free plate in the shaft at all in the bearings there. So that's a good thing. The seal looks like it's still okay. So that's where we're at the moment. So I think what we'll do is we're going to call this one part one so I can get it up so you can have a bit of a look at it. I don't want to make them too long, these videos. So we'll call this part one and part two will obviously uh, be the wiring going back on. We're also replacing the carburetor. That'll be a separate video probably as well as the oil feed line. We're going to do away with that as well. That's still to come. Thanks for watching, take it easy, and see you on part two.